I'm Evan, uh, and today I'm going to talk to you about mobile testing in plain English. And basically what I'm saying is that I'm going to show you how you can click a bunch of buttons automatically with your testing um, from simple layman's terms um, with, I mean, on your React Native apps in both Android and iOS. So we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> it's, it's a lot to unwrap. Um, so I'm American that somehow ended up in London. Um, long story, ask me afterward. Um, and I manage a web and Android team at uh, Velocity Black. Um, and I just love React Native. I've been working for with, with it and TypeScript uh, for a year now. Um, built a couple React Native apps for Velocity Black. And um, our current app with Velocity Black in Android is in React Native, and then we have a Swift iOS app. Um, so what is Velocity Black? Um, we're a members club, uh, and we're, uh, we're a private members club that's also a digital concierge. Um, so think of Amex on steroids, like just always at your fingertips. You can request pretty amazing things. Um, I can't really say some of the things. Uh, <laughs> Just if you go to our website, velocity.black, um, you'll, you'll see some examples. But um, it's pretty amazing. It's for a special group of people, and it's invitation only. Um, if you ask me, you may just get invited. Um, <laughs> and uh, enough about Velocity Black. <laughs> so I'm talking about end-to-end -end testing. And I think it's really hard. Um, and I'm sure you all agree. Um, how many of you have actually done end-to-end -end testing in browser or mobile, or, okay. So it's about 50% of the people, okay. Um, yeah, and, and for those people, um, I'm pretty sure you've come to think like, oh, why isn't this test working? It works, you know, one time and, you know, works and it doesn't work the next time. So these are the issues that I usually have with end-to-end -end testing. Um, it's, it's really lack of time, which means that like, uh, essentially developers like, really don't have time to relearn and retool um, basically what, they, what, what are they going to, uh, what are they going to do when, when you have to go into the documentation and everything like that. You have to relearn every time you go back into um, testing, whether you do BDD, TDD, or just test afterward. Um, and another thing is that management generally doesn't like testing because they're all like, we need a prototype, we need a prototype. So it definitely stifles productivity. Um, and lastly, the pain that we all have, we have one app that works. Um, you know, in, in, for instance, in mobile, we, it might work in Android and it doesn't work in iOS, this testing. And you're like, wait, but it works when I actually just click it myself. Um, so it's, it's really frustrating. There's no uniform way to actually test. Um, and this happens in like across the stack when it comes to uh, Android, iOS, or the browser. Um, but today, I, I think I have a solution that kind of allows it to work like almost across that whole stack that I just said. Um, so we'll investigate. <clears throat> so here, I'm, today I'm gonna talk about Cucumber. Um, Cucumber is a test runner. Um, it, it's really, um, and, it, and I've made some, I guess, assumptions or things that I think it would promise before you know, actually even using it. Because I actually picked up Cucumber from a fellow colleague who was using it in the back end. Um, we have a Node.js stack um, written in TypeScript. And we, for our testing, we actually use Cucumber. So Cucumber can be used you know, back end, front end, mobile. And um, essentially, I assume by looking at the Cucumber test, I'm like, well, it's easy. Um, people can write the test. They don't really have to know how things work. Um, it's it's going to be faster because you know we, we know they're just, it's just plain English. And then again, it's consistent because you know the expected result. It's not you're not writing different code for every single test you write. You're reusing a lot of the same code, or you're referencing it um, via like strings or regex, which we'll dig into later. Um, so what is Cucumber? Um, Cucumber tests are written in, pla in plain language because 
They can be read by anyone. You can use them to help improve in communication, collaboration, and trust on your team. So this is from Cucumber.io website. Um, there's a lot of great examples um, there, but most of them are probably in Java because if you're familiar with the Java community, Cucumber is quite big, um, and it's big, you know, across a lot of different languages. Um, just I haven't seen much of it in React Native, so I, I kind of wanted to give a talk on that um, because we found it very useful for React Native, you know, our our browsers, browser, our browser, <laughs> our mobile, sorry, <laughs> our um, our web apps uh, and a whole lot of other things. Um, so how does it work? Um, it's, so right here I have a sign up form and I'm testing, uh, I'm, I'm basically testing the whole flow as an integration test. So I'm actually clicking um, the input fields, typing in them and then pressing the submit button to sign up for like, a, for for supposedly our membership club. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so what this is right here, this file, the top bit, it's a feature file. And this is what I mean by plain English. Um, you can read it, you can understand it. You don't have to even look at the code um, really to actually see what's going on. Um, the, the code below it is actually another file um, written in TypeScript that's, uh, that's really just clicking uh, it's just mapping a regex uh, string to um, to a, a, I guess you'd say a Selenium command. In this case, it would be an Appium command, um, which I'll get into later as well. Uh, and it makes it really easy. So to wrap, to, I guess to explain things in a simpler in simpler terms, uh, this uh, this is one scenario, and these are, those are a bunch of steps. And basically, the given when then stuff is just syntactic sugar. It's really just for you. Um, you can write these tests in every which way you want. You can even include buts if you really want to. Um, but it makes things really easy to understand. And a lot of the time, you don't even have to. Um, what we do at Vossy Black, we'll take like product requirements, I'll copy and paste them into one of these feature files, and then be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to rewrite it to, to make it work with my. Uh, my steps below. Um, so it, it makes it really, really easy to uh, write um, tests. Uh, so how are we actually going to build this testing in framework? I've just shown you the test runner. We need to actually know how we're actually going to click things in um, in the in, in it click things in the app and then actually get a response and actually log it out. That that's actually the difficult part. Um, so I'm may be familiar with detox. Um, if you're not, it's a, basically it's a test framework that does do the clicking and you can write the tests all in one. It, and it works with emulators, the iOS emulator. It partially works for Android, but it's not completely production ready. I don't know, correct me if, you're, if, if I'm wrong in QA. <laughs> um, and it, um, it will soon hopefully support Cucumber, but right now it's not really documented and there's a PR or there's a, I guess there's an issue um, with some suggested code in there. Um, so when, when I was looking into solutions of like, oh, how am I going to get these simple tests that I just showed you um, into my React Native app? I was like, okay, well, I probably can't use Detox because of those issues. Um, though, you know, it's promised. It seems really fast and reliable, but I prefer a slower test that actually that works and that works on all devices, um, especially our Android app, because we're looking to support you know all the devices on Android, and that's that's very difficult um, <clears throat> and not possible with Detox. But it's pretty cool. So if I show you the how that Detox works, this is just a simple GIF from their um, from their I guess their README. It's pretty fast. Um, we're not going to get to that speed, but um, and right here, I think they're using yeah, they're using Mocha, or I guess with that, yeah. Um, but the the code that that you write for these tests is simply those steps. But every single test, you'd have to rewrite the step, or like recompose it in a separate file or class, um, which is very very 
hard because then you have to relearn the whole, um, for me, I find that difficult, going back into the testing documentation, figuring out, okay, well, what are, what's all this thing again? How do I you know, click something? How do I get something you know, working? Um, I'd rather just look at a string and be like, okay, that's, that's, that's what I need to write. Um, so anyways, uh, so we decided to choose Appium um, because it's the most widely used uh, currently uh, for outside of React Native. It's definitely the most widely used um, mobile testing, uh, I guess you'd say service or framework. Um, and it's, what's great about Appium is it's pretty agnostic to all test runners because it runs off of um, a similar Selenium driver API um, and then uses the Node.js drivers, which I'll get into later as well. Um, and like I said, it's reliable. It can run this in the, in the demo. We're going to be running it on a pixel and it's, uh, it works. I haven't found many devices where it doesn't probably maybe old versions of Android. It might not work very well, but it works on a lot of devices. Um, so that's great. It works on devices and it's agnostic. Yeah, I think that'll work with Cucumber. Um, the last thing we're gonna need to put this all together um, is uh, Web, WebDriver IO. Um, WebDriver IO is simply just gonna connect everything together. It's going to um, basically be the driver for our testing. And that's why it said browser, even though it was clicking, that was a mobile um, in the feature file I showed you. Um, it, it said browser there because they assume everything's either a browser or a mobile, you know, um, or, or a mobile device, um, but it still runs off of the same type of API, the Selenium API. Um, so you switching between mobile and browser isn't so difficult. Um, you could write steps for both and then just switch out the service, um, whether it be Appium or Selenium. Um, like something like, you know, Protractor, which runs on Selenium. Um, so it's, it's quite nice. Um, so we're going to use that as our kind of wrapper of sorts to connect the two. Um, so here I'm going to show you that sign up uh, feature file in action. Um, hopefully it do I just, okay. <laughs> so on the left is, this is an Android Pix, Google Pixel, and then on the right is an iPhone 6, um, and it's just signed me up. Oh no, it's signing me up. <laughs> um, in the left, it's doing the Android version. Um, oh, it spelled my name wrong. No, it's right. <laughs> <clears throat> so both, both seem to work fine. Um, and then both of our you know, scenarios pass. Um, so we can see the same exact uh, output um, as what we saw in the feature file. So when you're writing your tests, you expect you know, what you're gonna see in your output as well. So it's very clear to see, okay, that failed um, and versus trying to find a certain, you know, I guess declaration in your code. Uh, it's very, very simple to debug. Um, that's another thing I find with Cucumber. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna, next one. So how did that all work? Um, as I explained earlier, we have those three different things. Um, firstly, we, we write our Cucumber tests. Um, or I guess from a product scenario, if I'm building a new product, I'm going to write the tests with my product manager, like come up with some tests that may not match the, what, the, what we've written for our steps, um, but uh, it matches the product requirements. And then I'm going to translate them into um, what we have for our steps. Uh, and then I'm going to basically run them and then say, okay, uh, Cucumber, tell web, uh, run a WebDriver IO command, like as we saw earlier, it said browser click. Um, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna click an accessibility label in my Re React Native app. So in Android and, and iOS, we have these things called accessibility labels that allow us to actually kind of get in, you know, actually see the, it's used for accessibility. <laughs> um, allow us to actually see what things are with, via text. Um, so that's pretty useful for tagging um, so that we can figure out what we want to click. And then once it clicks that, or once it 
once WebDriver.io actually sends that command, it's going to translate it into Appium. Uh, uh, I guess an Appium command, and then Appium's is going to actually communicate with the device. So it, it is sounds really, really complex, but once you get it set up, once you get it all working, it's it's wonderful. Um, so <clears throat> we've used um, we've used Appium and Cucumber for about mm, I guess ever since we've launched our, um, our our React Native app. So it's maybe just over six, seven months, um, and it's it's been great. Like um, writing tests, it doesn't. It takes me, you know, a couple minutes, and you know, some juniors it will take me maybe a couple, maybe a couple hours or things like that. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to to just pick up. Oh, okay, I, I'm going through the flow. Okay, I can write some tests, whether it be before or after development. Um, it's pretty flexible. Um, so yeah, we write tests a lot more often just because it's easier. Um, and what's great about uh, this setup is that you don't really have to uh, like be like, oh, it has to be React Native. You could use a native app. It's fine. Because we have a native iOS app and we have a lot of support there, um, we, we're like, OK, well, we can actually start applying these tests because they're so easy. We'll apply them to our, our Swift app, um, which is really, really great. Um, and then again, like uh, this setup also, like you can just switch out the language. You can use Babel, TypeScript, or whatever. Um, so we love that. And yeah, again, we use Cucumber for everything. So when you have a developer moving from different things and testing things, it's not complicated. Um, it's a really simple process. <clears throat> so what is like really the, did, you know, what we said in the beginning of this talk, what is like what we learned, I guess you would say. Um, what's what, we, what did we learn? Um, it's definitely flexible. Um, this, this is mainly because of WebDriver.io being able to switch out um, test runners and test services. Um, it's definitely faster for like people to pick up. I wouldn't say the tests are faster. I would say tests might be even slower than, than some other more modern solutions. Um, but when it comes, it's I think it's costing the team a lot more time to have. I guess development time is more expensive than testing time. It's better to have automated tests that just work rather than developers who time or developers not writing tests. Um, but unfortunately, um, this setup's a little difficult. But I did put the source code up, um, so you'll be able to access it. Um, next page. Next, I guess next slide. Um, and I am doing working on a CLI for this, uh, so it will be um, hopefully available soon. I'm testing it in house, um, and like where we just haven't had the opportunity to actually say, "Yeah, this is ready." Um, so when it is, we'll definitely put it on our blog. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs>